Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jaylee. This is Jaylee's Corner, and this is my review for Love After Lockup Season 2, Episode 21. We only have two episodes left this season uh, for these sets of couples or whatever, but we know the other season, something else is starting in August with all new people, okay? But girl, this episode, this episode, this episode, let's just get it started first, okay? But if you have not done so already, please make sure that you are liking the video. Please hit the like button. As I'm going to say in every single video, hitting the like button helps YouTube share our videos. It helps them know that we are people are watching our videos. So please like the video. Okay, I'll wait. Y'all know I'll wait, okay? So go ahead and like it, okay? Go ahead and like it or whatever. Do not forget to also subscribe to my channel and become a whole J-Bird, J-Bird, da 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 and all that good shit. It's 3 o'clock in the morning, so I'm trying to be quiet so my neighbors don't be like, why is she yelling about some damn birds? Anyway, so let's get started with Lizzie and Scott. Okay, Lizzie and Scott is still in LA. You know what I'm saying? Well, she's still there. Scott lives there. I'm like, I guess her job is like cool, her not but she probably only been there for like a day or two. So I guess she's just still on vacation. But you know, Lizzie come up out the bathroom in a whole uh, 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 towel. I said, girl, you walk around like you live there? I'm like, okay. And so she's like, this friend of is just it's just tacky. And I'm like, but it ain't yours. That ain't your house. Girl, calm it down. So as she walk around critiquing Scott's furniture, Charlene walk in. Oh, you still here? She's like, oh, what? do you have a key? She's like, yes, I have a key. Do you have a key? Well, no, but I have this. Lizzie then goes to her purse, her wallet or whatever, and pulls off the ring that Scott gave her or whatever. And then Lizzie like, you know, this is what he got me. Oh, that's cute. Oh, whatever, girl, whatever. So, Charlene, like, I just, you know, Charlene don't like Lizzie. And, but, but it's because Lizzie used Scott, but Scott was dumb enough to let her, to let her get all that money by him. But she don't like Lizzie, so it is what it is. So, you know, she like, you know, you, you and Scott must be messing around or whatever, because he is my boyfriend. We are together. Okay, we are together. And he said, you know, he can't get rid of you or whatever and everything. You know what I'm saying? You and him must be having sex because why else wouldn't he, you know, why else would you be here? And she mean, like, you are you are crazy. Like you really you really crazy. And her confession, she said, you know, I feel like if me and Scott was messing around, like, why does she care? You know, if we did, I'm like, does, does something happen, Charlene? Again, I think Charlene likes Scott. I think Scott is just too, just not all the way there to capitalize on someone who's actually there from, he could have had a whole black woman this whole time. All them years you waited on Lizzie. Yeah, Charlene, right there up under your nose, but it's what. And Charlene looked up and coming home from work. And it's dumb because it's like, you know she lived there, Lizzie. You know she lived there. So her coming in the house, what did you what did you mess with her for? Talking about, do you have a key? Of course she has a key. She lives there. Okay, she and she walked in the house. But I digress. Anyway, when Lizzie said how her and Scott are a couple things together now, whatever, she's like, girl, I need to hear that from Scott. Scott, Scott, come in here. I'm like, Lizzie, just calm down. Scott, 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 come, Scott, come moseying on up in the room or whatever. Tell Charlene what you told me yesterday. He's like, um, he didn't know kind of what she was talking about or whatever. And he said something random, but it wasn't that. You told me that, you know, you couldn't get rid of her and, you know, she just won't leave. And he like, I didn't. I didn't say any of that. I, I, that ain't what I said. You know, I, when you, oh, you didn't, are you lying, Scott? Oh, my God, Scott, you told me. He like, that's not what I said or whatever. He like, look, Charlene has been there for me for years. We've been friends for like 10, 15 years or whatever. And she has been there for me when everything was like going downhill. She's been there for me when I had nothing. You know what I'm saying? And she's always been a great friend to me. He's like, you, you know, you. You're you're my girlfriend, you know what I'm saying? But I don't want to lead to lose either of you. And my thing is, but what's the point? What's the point of this conversation? Like, I'm like, Lizzie, do you really think Lizzie really think that's uh, that's that Selena? <laughs> Lizzie really think that Charlene and Scott messing around? 
I don't think they are. I think Charlene may want to, but Scott is too dense to realize it could happen. And so, but she also, just need us somewhere to stay. But she also brought up how I'm also helping him. She probably helping him save money on paying bills because he's in debt because of your ass, Lizzie. Okay, you ain't brought that nan. You took him on a date that was free. It took his car, which means he paid for the gas. So my thing is, you ain't did nothing besides bring him a heartache and more bills. Okay, so Charlene, this is like, look, before y'all get into this couple thing, how you y'all together, whatever, she need to be drug tested. I say, oh, all right, Charlene, Lizzie needs to be drug tested, and Lizzie, you know what? Okay, that's fine, because if I do, so does Scott. And so she brings up, you know, Scott's been acting weird. He was acting weird, you know, before or whatever. And I wonder if he's on something. And I'm like, he is. He, to the, girl, I hope Scott not out here doing drugs and that's where his money went to. Because, who knows, Scott do look like he could, he could be, you know, a little bit, you know, whatever. But I don't know. So that's how they think, you know, with them both having to take some kind of drug test. Um, Andrea and Lamar. So they, Andrea and Lamar, are making their way to Utah. She didn't convince this man to go back to her hometown or whatever. The kids stay in uh, California with somebody they know in Cali, and so it's just Lamar and Andrea driving on or whatever. And in the car they were driving, and he was bringing up how you know I feel like you thought I was just some square dude. And I didn't smoke, I didn't drink, and I didn't, I didn't, act, I didn't hang around that or whatever. Or the people in my life didn't do that, and that just wasn't the case. I do feel like Andrea had this imagination that just ran wild. And she assumed Lamar was an innocent black man who was put away for the wrong reasons. And he really didn't mean to do it. He accidentally, you know, committed some kind of crime or whatever. And he didn't smoke. He didn't drink. He's just waiting to get out of prison and be a great, upstanding husband and father. And the truth was, he was flawed. And the truth was, he'd been gone for so long, he's still trying to figure out how wh where he fits in life. And he still wants to hang out with who he hung out with before he went to jail. Because if he went to jail in his 20s, he, he's, he's, and his girl, he not, anyway, she like, well, I don't, you know, it's, it is what it is. So, you know, and, and as they go in there, you know, he like, I just don't want to get there and like feel out of place or whatever. Cause I don't know what it's like to be in Utah. You know what I'm saying? We see this stop by the little, you know, welcome to Utah. So, oh my God, I'm home. I, oh, pull over. We got to get up by the side. I'm my like, girl. Okay, so, you know, I'm like, it's just kind of crazy. So, we see they there, and they're going to one of her friend's houses for a little party, okay? So, he can see how things kind of, got things happen in Utah. <laughs> Andrea really feels like this is going to be a great party, and he's going to really love it. And he's going to want to move to Utah. I'm looking like, girl, it's going to take more than one party with them people at that party to make him feel like he wants to come back. Because he isn't like, in, you're not bringing him around anything he's used to. And when you have a person who was one locked away for 20, 20 years, he not going to want to go somewhere else foreign. He just isn't. And I know that's kind of crazy to say, but I feel like there's a there's a lot of space, a lot of other places to go between besides Cali and Utah. Like, those are two complete culture shocks for each person. You know, they we, we know how Andrea and her kids said, you know, going to, to Compton and going to L.A. was a culture shock for them because they came from Utah. I'm like, y'all can't put your middle ground? Either Utah, the Mormon state, or Cali, you know, the, the, the free weed state, girl, I'm like, it just seemed too much. So, they get to the party, you know, it was one other black person there, okay, and that was her best friend. Um, We do see, they're like, hey, you're hanging with the Mormons, you're hanging with the Mormons, I would have left. At that moment, okay, up, oh, gotta go. But he stays, you know what I'm saying? We see one of her friends brings up how, you know, I haven't seen him since the wedding, you know? And if I did not know that Lamar had been locked up, you know what I'm saying? I, you, you couldn't even tell that he's a hardened criminal. I said, hardened criminal? He's a hardened criminal? I was like, okay. You wouldn't even know it. I'm like, you could be a, let me stop. <laughs> so you know we do see Lamar talking to her, our best friend the, the black girl who came to the wedding with the only other black person there and you know he she's asking like nice little normal questions or whatever you know it's like you know how you got to how's it going like oh it's going fine or whatever um she also asked like so could you see yourself moving to Utah at all like 
because you know she really wants to be here. He was like, no, nah. you know, he's like, I was locked up for 20 years. I've already, sp he said, I already spent 20 years away from my family. And I'm just, I, and he's like, and if I would have got out of, what I like, this is what I like that he said. He said, if I would have got out and been able to parole here, it probably would have been an easier transition for me. He said, but because I was gone for 20 years, transitioned out into, into Cali, I'm just more comfortable in L.A. And she's like, but, you know, but she's comfortable here. Like, if she wants to come here. He said, I get that. He said, but you know what I'm saying? She don't have no family here. Like, he like, my whole family is in L.A. She don't have any family here. He like, but she wants to. He like, yeah, but she has me. Like, our family is now in L.A. I mean, her kids are there with her in L.A. You know, uh, I'm not saying that she, you know, she gave up a lot to be with him. But I feel like once you moved to L.A., you moved to L.A. Like, I don't think y'all should move back to L I don't think y'all should move back to Utah because both of those places are y'all own thing. I feel like if y'all want to move somewhere so that y'all both feel more comfortable, y'all need to find a, a whole other neutral place to where y'all can both work. The kids can have good school dis districts or whatever, but it should not be either L.A. or Utah. Okay, I'm just saying that. Anyway, for him, he like, you know what I'm saying? Look. She didn't send her best friend. I had to talk to me, whatever. I ain't falling for. I'm not gonna be good with bamboozled or led astray. So in the house, we see Andrea talking to the other friends or whatever, and she's like, you know, I hope he loves it here. I just hope he loves it, and he wants and he doesn't want to leave, and we can just be here. They like, oh, if you if you say so. She then say, you know what I'm saying, and what he don't know is. I've been talking to my old boss or whatever, trying to get, you know, I've been talking to my old boss about working, like, and now I have a job. You're like, if he okay. And so she's been sneaking behind his back and doing stuff. And the one friend said, you really should not be, you know, you really should pray and ask God for guidance because that's what I do when I'm conflicted. But you should not be out here going behind your husband's back doing stuff. I'm like, that's very, very true. Because when he find out, he's not going to be happy. At all, because that's just sneaky. The same way I wouldn't want him to be sneaking, trying to, you know what I'm saying, keep her and and, and, and Callie if the plan was for, for them to, you know, go back to Utah. I mean, he asked you to move to California. You move to California. You should not be trying to secretly get your way back into Utah just without having that conversation with him. And I don't think you should think of, let's go back and visit Utah once and then decide to move back. I mean, take him back and forth a couple times. Let him get used to how it is there. And then, you know what, maybe we should move back to Utah because these are the perks. Like, don't just look for you a job. Look for him a job, too, because he got to do something as well. And I just would not move to Utah, period. Okay. Anyway, so we do see um, outside Lamar is talking about, talking to the guys who was there, or whatever. And the one dude, Lamar said, "This reminds me of Children of Corn because the dude was a ginger. He like he has like a red beard or whatever. It was really really weird. So we're well, not weird, but just you know, because he was like, you know, uh, the son Tennyson, you know, is going on a mission. Okay, and now I should just explain it to you. He's like, uh, uh, okay. So are they talking or whatever. You know, he bring up how, you know, do, do you think you want to, like, learn more about, you know, the Mormon stuff or whatever? Because it will bind you and your wife even more. He like, nah, nah, you know, I, I don't want to convert or whatever. I'm, I'm cool with what I'm doing. And he just, he, I think he feel like they're trying to convert him, even by suggesting. I don't think there's anything wrong with them suggesting he learned a little bit more about it. I do think it's an issue if they are trying to tell him to learn more to get him into it. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, if he's saying, like, I don't want to convert, leave me be, leave that man be, leave that man be. And then he like, look, I, I'm not moving to Utah. I'm not co converting to being a Mormon. None of that shit, so leave me alone. It ain't going to happen. And I said, well, I guess so. I guess so. Next up, we have Tracy and Clint. Okay, Clint, Clint, Tracy. So, we see they've been kind of arguing a, a, the all, either all night or for a couple hours. Okay, now they the, the door not kicked down. She came out the bathroom. You know he they sitting down and Lisa having a conversation. You know what I'm saying? Tracy like you know what I'm saying you should just had sex with her. Like why would you you know she just did that or whatever because it's just so crazy. You know you was texting her that she weren't in love with me anymore. You were texting her that you know she's your that I'm not your goddess anymore. That she, she can be your new goddess or whatever, and I just can't believe that she would do that. You know what I'm saying? Why would you tell someone that you don't love me anymore? And he like, I don't want her. Yes, you do, Clint. You want, just go be with her, Clint. Go be with her, Clint. 
and he like, I don't want her, whatever. He like, you know, I was just mad at you for, you know, going back to jail. So it, we kind of figure out that the time that he, well, first of all, what we did not know was it's been about a year since Tracy, they got married and Tracy went back to jail. So she was gone longer than we even knew. So the time that he was talking to this girl was when Tracy was locked up. Okay. And he just continued the conversation a little bit once she was locked up and once she got out. And he's like, I was just upset that you went back or whatever. And, you know, that's what happened. He brings up how Tracy got locked back up. He, The girl, Stephanie, had reached out to him on, like, social media or whatever. And he, like, we started talking. And quickly it just escalated to where we were talking about being together. And it just kind of went from there. He, but, you know, oh, so you're going to leave me now, Clint? Is this when you leave me? He's like, no, I don't want to leave you. Like, I, I love you, whatever. You know what I'm saying? He's like, if I was going to leave you, I would have done it already since you are, you've already done the worst things to me. So, you, you know, you've already done the worst. Like, I would have been left you if that was the case. Anyway, they talking or whatever after she said it was, it was it was a whole year ago, Clint. He said, okay. He said he loved her. She said she loves him. I always want you. And it, they get the hug and the kiss and whatever. And they kind of squash the whole beef, you know. She then say her confessional, you know, I'm just so hurt by what, what Clint did. I say, Tracy, you married him, smoked crack, stole his car, disappeared, smoked some more crack, and then went to jail. If Clint was texting some girl, that's not the worst. You eat by default. He he kinda he this is he should get away with what he did. Let it go. Girl, just let it go. Um, so we see the next day, you know, Tracy at the pool, you know, because Clint wake up and she ain't there, whatever. So he go down to chit chat with her, whatnot. You know, and she's still upset. And she's like, you know, I need you to just delete her contact information from under your phone or whatever. Just delete it out, delete it, delete, delete it. He said, All right. So he deletes it out and says if she and if she tries to contact you, like if she tries to contact me, I'm gonna tell you. Tracy then says, Okay, you know, I think we should do as well. You know, since there's been a lot of craziness that happened since the first time we, you know, got married, we should renew our vows. We should, we're in Vegas. We should renew our vows or whatever, but we need to tell your mom about it since, you know what I'm saying, she wasn't there the first time and she just wasn't too happy about it then. Like, let's have a conversation with mom. So they FaceTime mom, like, we have news for you. She's like, I don't want no babies. I, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't know. They're like, no, 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 it's not no baby. What is it? What is it, Clint? You know, they, they you know, she said, we, me and him want to get remarried. We want to, you know, no, not remarried. We want to renew our vows here in Vegas. Vegas? You're in Vegas? Oh, I'm just so shocked. Let me get up for being shocked. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know, you know, because the last time, you know, we don't want that. Clint then say, we, it won't be motherfucking crack, mom. I say, mm. and then he laughs. And she's like, oh, Clint, you know, I'm like, oh, girl, I guess so. So she tells me, like, do what you do, whatever. Again, I don't want him calling me about no foolishness or whatnot. Like, be normal as you can. I say, girl, they're going to try. Um, but we never know. So they going to then have a second, you know, a, a, a vow renewal there in Vegas, and when Trey's like, you know, we want to have it, you know, the traditional way, like the class was traditional, classic, or whatever. She said, no, you know, the, the traditional way would be in a, was being a church, not you know in Vegas, but you know, do what you want to do, okay, have fun, bye. Now my girl, get it together. So we then have Michael, Sarah, and Megan, okay, the thruple of it all. So we see Sarah, you know, Sarah said she's been depressed. She went to this whole, you know probably postpartum a little bit but you know this is these moments of, of realizing that michael doesn't respect her you know what i'm saying so she goes to see a lawyer a divorce lawyer and you know she's like so why are you here like why do you want a divorce sarah didn't say oh you know i was dating this guy he we was together he was in jail we got married in jail you know he then proposed to, to some other girl after we were married, you know what I'm saying? I got pregnant. The whole spiel. And I'm like, she's looking like, oh, wow. Wow. Oh, real. Oh, wow. Because this, you know, it's a whole little story or whatever. Anyway, the lawyer like, look. So do you have kids? Like, yeah, we have two kids. And this is my thing about, about Sarah. I think the issue is you can't. Sarah made a conscious decision to have unprotected sex with her husband, as she should, when she knew her husband was a cheater before prison. She then did that knowing, that, as she said, that she was ovulating. So it seems like Sarah purposely got pregnant. 
once you have one kid, you are kind of aware of how to pre- how to prevent a second one. And I feel like she got pregnant on purpose. Is is my opinion. And I can't feel sorry for you for getting pregnant the second time by the guy who wasn't really there the first time. That's your stupidity. That's not even that. That's that's you because it and it doesn't mean that Michael is innocent in it all. I, what it what it means is he's already left you as a single mom of one kid. Why allow him to 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 then leave you to be a single mom to two? Anyway, so you know the lawyer asked, like you know, well, do you like did like do y'all have kids together? Like you know, are you scared that he may like come get the kids because if there is no custody order. And if he comes to get your children like and takes them wherever, you can't like stop him from doing that. So you know what I'm saying? It'll be hard to get them the kids back if he just takes them. I'm like, you scaring her, <laughs> truth be told. You know, she said we not but I wanna file, I wanna file for divorce. So she's like, Okay, you gotta do this and that, or whatever. You know, she's like, and so we have to get them served. Well, can I serve them? She's like, Well, I don't know because I don't want you to get cold feet and, and rethink about the divorce once you get that because if we have someone else serve him that he has the papers if you serve him and he some kind of way convinces you to not do the divorce it won't happen so i'm i feel like girl but you care a little bit too much like do you know sarah no okay so i thought i saw a spider but i was, I was tripping i might be just tired because it's like 3 30 in the morning so again she said i want to get a divorce or whatever um i'm going to michigan to see him because he needs to see his daughters or whatever. And I'll just give him the divorce paper and let him know that I'm going to file for divorce. And I'm like, okay. So we then see Sarah talking to her little lesbian friend. Okay, and that's the, the best friend who I promise you wants Sarah's vagina. So, you know, the lesbian friend said, you know, I'm saying, so what's going on or whatever. Um, and it was funny because Sarah and her friend was, Sarah was definitely talking in her white girl voice. Like, I mean... It was a white valley girl voice, and I'm like, girl, your black scene is completely gone when no black people are around. Anyway, so she brings up how, you know, Michael doesn't respect me, you know what I'm saying? Um, I know my worth now. He does not know my worth, and I'm just tired of the, I don't want to be second fiddle or whatever. And I realize now that he, you know, this isn't the one, not even isn't the one, but he don't respect me. He don't care about me or whatever. And I'm just not realizing that. I say, girl, just now? Okay. So she said she felt like I felt I felt as a mother. I felt I'd been a good wife. I don't think she felt as a mother. I do think Sarah is a great mom. I think she was dumb to have a second baby. Even though her second baby is her blessing, I still feel like, girl, girl. But, you know, I do think she's a good mom. I don't think she felt as a wife. I think her failure was believing Michael. You know what I'm saying? We all have believed. Like, Michael is Sarah's bad guy. I had a bad guy too in my, in my early 20s. I was just lucky and smart enough to not have children with said person. And, you know, because I could have been tied to the bad guy for my whole life. Like, like all his other children. You know what I'm saying? The bad guy has, as I check, he had like seven kids. Not when I met him, he only had one. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, all the he he had seven. He may have more now. I'm not sure. But you know, I'm like Michael is just her bad guy. Um, she just I, I don't bring kids into those situations or whatever. But you know, what I'm saying she, I I figured it out. So the best friend do say like, you know, you not you no, know, you're not a bad mom or a bad wife. Like Michael was a bad father. Michael was a bad husband. Michael was a liar and a cheater, and that's true. He was. But my thing about that was he was before he went to jail. So I digress. Anyway, we then see Sarah driving down to see Michael. Um, she, as she says, she's gonna. She don't want him talking her out of giving him divorce papers. She does not want him to, you know, just kind of uh, maneuver his way out of the situation. But she is going to go down there, give them the papers, and also let him see the two babies. Um, we then see Megan. Megan is in, you know, Texas or whatever, talking to her daddy. Okay, and you know, she the daddy didn't know. That she went to Flint to see Michael. So she's catching her daddy up on what happened in Flint. Now she also did not mention that she told Michael that she kissed his homeboy. Okay, she left all that part out. But she made sure to tell him, I went down there and he's still married or whatever. The second kid is his. Wait, wait, what kid? The first or the second one? She's like, the second baby was his. And he confirmed that it was his baby. So, you know what I'm saying? He's married and he has now has a second kid with the same person. The daddy like, you know what I'm saying? I just, you know, 
it's kind of crazy that you're putting up with this book up or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Um, he like, Michael isn't real. Michael isn't honest or whatever. And, you know, he when we know he's not even providing for his children or whatever. So, like, he has issues and you just still messing with him or whatnot. So, she's like, well, Dad, just because someone messes up doesn't mean that you, that you stop loving them. The love doesn't go away. And it doesn't. It, it really, really doesn't. But I feel like when someone has another wife, even if they're bad to the wife, even if they're a horrible husband to said wife and has you thinking that I'm lollipops or rainbows, the fact that that man has a wife who he got pregnant would just turn me completely off. Even if I still loved him, I can't be with you, bruh. Why not? Because you have a wife and a baby. You put a baby in your wife, bruh. Not a girlfriend. Not just a baby mama. A wife. Okay? A wife. Girl. And again, this stuff, I, I just feel like once, you, once you're in your 30s, there's a certain thing that you just don't deal with. Anyway... So the daddy then, because you know, her son, I know the love just doesn't go away or whatever. The daddy said, you know, women have intuition. Like your mom has wonderful intuition. Don't do you really? Do you not like what? What's up with you? She don't have no intuition. She doesn't. Or he, the sex knocked it out of her. I don't know. Either way, dumb, dumb diddy on Megan. Anyway, you know. But I, I do love him, dad. He like, oh my god. So he like call him. She's like, what? Call him. I want to talk to him or whatever. So, she called. Dad gets the phone. It's a little FaceTime bank or whatever. He like, what up? Not knowing his daddy. I'm Megan's daddy. He like, oh, yeah. <clears throat> hey, hi. So, they chit-chat. Not even chit-chat. They talking. The dad like, look, why didn't you tell my daughter that you were married? He like, well, you know, we didn't really talk about it all the way or whatever. So, like, it just didn't happen. Why did you? So, you, so you, you're not being honest. You didn't tell her the truth. And all this, and the questions that Daddy was asking, Michael was kind of like, I don't, you know, uh, well, we didn't talk about that. Well, you know, and then she went to Flint, and, and stuff happened, like, and you hurt her. Well, she hurt me, too. How did my daughter hurt you? Well, you know, it's not my place to tell you, you know, what will go on between us privately. Like, that's up to her to tell you whatever, but you know what I'm saying? I, so he just wasn't really answering the dad's questions, but, like, he never does. He never does. So he didn't give her dad any more information than he would gave Megan. So I mean it was what it was. So the dad like, look, you fake you phone, you said you you not responsible, you're a liar. You you just <laughs> click and it's ended the conversation or whatever. Because he's he said what he needed to say and ended the call. At that point in time, Megan felt like you know what I'm saying I just don't know what to do, or whatever. I'm just I don't know I don't know if I should like my dad's always been right or whatever. And you know I just don't I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. No you're not you, you may still love him, but you need to move on. Clearly, move on. So, I'm stuck. Oh, should I stay or should I work it out? Girl, he got a wife. Even if he divorced Sarah, he cheated on his wife. Oh, idiot. And the grand resistance, as I always say, Marcelino and Brittany. So, we know that Marcelino went to Tito's house, okay? And they were sitting there. Like my listen can huh? That's something. So they were sitting there chit chat, right? So when he got in there, Tito was like, Oh hey, like what you doing here? Like what's going on? Oh, I didn't know what's kinda of talking, just a little conversation or whatever. So, you know, they sitting there, right? You see they sitting there talking, you know, you see Martha, you know, sitting there, you see, you see Tito sitting there, whatever, and they're having a bit of a conversation. So he like, you know, so what's up? Like, what's what, what we going to talk about? Well, you know, I just feel like, you know, Marcelino feels like Tito is his father back in the day. And the, he, he he's really connecting to situations that, to me, shouldn't be connecting or whatever. So, you know, he brings, because he keeps on how, you know, Tito's after and Gio, you know, Giovanni's life the same way my dad was after the mine. It's still two different situations. Tito had that kid while the mama was in prison. Period. Okay. So they talk. He like, you know, I have some questions for Brittany. And, you know, Brittany couldn't answer these questions or whatever. So I figured I'll come to you. And he's like, okay, like about what? Like about, you know, what is it about Gio? Is it about, like, is something wrong? He's like, no, nah, you just got to talk with, like, what is, you know, you being around the bush, like, what's going on? Well, ab about custody. He's like, okay, like, what about, like, like what? What? <laughs> You know, he keeps saying how, you know what I'm saying, well, 
I've had Jill for a year, and you know what I'm saying? You know, why haven't you been around? He's like, well, that's not true. You have not had my son for a year. Like, what are you talking about? You can instantly tell that Tito was pissed. Pissed. Pissed, okay? And I think the reason he's pissed is because he's that boy's father. Period. Point blank, period. Marcelino is talking to Tito as if Tito is his dad. And it seemed like Tito isn't because Tito's been around the baby. So, boy, bye. Anyway, Tito, like, you ain't had him for no year. You know what I'm saying? You know, we can talk about custody. He, like, however, at the end of the day, Giovanni is mine and Brittany's kid, okay? And I don't see her. I don't see her with you. She didn't follow behind you. So, you know what I'm saying? What's the point? You're talking about, I'm not giving up. You know what I'm saying? My kid, you know what I'm saying? Ain't going to happen. Whatever. The courts gave him to me because Brittany did not show up to court. Brittany did not do the bare minimum. They gave a father full custody in Vegas of a kid because the mama didn't do something. So, you know, some have to be up. And I say, I agree. Now, Brittany did say that she didn't show up. But Brittany said the reason was because she didn't know about things. So, it's kind of like we don't know how that's going or whatever. So, he said, well, let's discuss, discuss custody because Gio should be 100% ours. And, man, Tito was like, all right, now. Nah. He said, I'll be dead before you ever get 100% custody of my kid. You know I'm saying? You know, you come to my house, it's, it's disrespectful. And that's where Marcelino messed up. You went to that man's house and you tried to tell him that y'all should get, that he should give you his son 100%. And I'm like, nah, bruh. Brittany was 100% right and said, no, we should talk about 50-50 custody, and then we can see what happens from there, but there's no reason to cause the beef and issue between Tito because he can be spiteful, and I feel like the minute that Marcelino got there and then was kind of just talking to Tito as if he was a dead be dad, like, you're not around, I've had a kid for a year, and Tito kept like, you haven't had him for a year, he's like, what's March to March? He's like, yeah, but you haven't had him for no full year, and, you know, it's like, you just, it, it, it got bad from there, you know, he keep, like, we did have him for a year, you know, we did have him for a year, and we don't get no support from you, like, we don't get no money, we don't ask you for nothing or whatever. And I'm like, but, again, he had the kid for, four, what, for three or four years while she was locked up. I'm like, Marcelino is the person, like, you only had him for a year. That kid, like, six. His mom was in prison for four years. So who do you think helped take care of him? Even if he didn't, even if Tito didn't have him the whole time, that's what's the, no, no. Marcelino, you dead wrong, bro. You dead wrong. At that point, things got feisty, okay? Because Marcelino keeps saying how we had him for a year and you don't be here. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, Tito stands up. Now it's a fight, okay? <laughs> As you see, the producer, like, oh, she, like, the producer's confused, like, what do we do? First of all, he looks too old to be trying to stop a fight. I don't want him to get hurt. Anyway, um, so they going back and forth, like, what up? What up? What up? What up? They start swinging. It become a whole fight. I'm like, what is going on here? What, why are y'all... Like, it was just... Look, they throwing blows. Like, they, they swinging on each other or whatever. It was just team... I have a couple pictures. It was team too much. Team not enough. Team break it up. And the funny part was, as they tussling... Nobody else except this one producer in the pink shirt is trying to stop them. As you see, the one guy on the side just puts his hand out. He ain't nowhere near the fight. I felt like he was holding his hand back to prevent th them from falling to the camera versus stop the damn fight. And I'm like, we can tell that they have never thought to have security on here for anything in case the men fought. Because I don't think we've ever had an issue where one person met the other person's ex or whatever. So, I mean, they didn't have security. And I think from now on, they probably will. At least one or two people, just in case. But, you know, he like, stop it. No, you got to stop it. At one point, Tito hit the producer because he was he, he got in the middle. It was just it was just so, I was like, I cannot believe this. Now, the one thing about it, though, um, Marcelino, I'm not going to say he won. I'm going to say he subdued Tito because Tito, like, tripped over like the microphone or whatever, he tripped and he tripped and slipped back into the couch. And once he did that, Marcino just kind of you know pinned him down. Um, and then you see Tito was holding uh, his arm or his hands so he couldn't swing on him or whatever with the one hand. And the producer like just just stop it, guys, just just stop it. It was more like a wrestling match fight or whatever. You know what I'm saying? 
but you could Tito was pissed when he got up. And I think it was because you came to my house and pissed me off and now I'm fighting. It was, it was girl, it was so much. So, you know, <laughs> Tito walking away, so is um uh Marcelino and Marcelino, you know, Brittany gonna be mad or whatever you said. We I we he, he said we needed this conversation, but we did not need the confrontation. But I feel like you went to that man's house. And confront him. You caused the confrontation. You should have followed Brittany's directions and not went and talked to him. Period. Period. Okay. So, I just can't. You know, he get home and Brittany come outside and she's pissed. You think this is fucking funny? He just called me. As you see, she she doesn't look too happy. She looks very pissed the fuck off. And you can tell she not dressed. She wasn't dressed to be on camera. She like she threw some stuff on or whatever, you know. He just t- Tito texted me and told me to bring my son to, br- to bring my son home in thirty minutes, or I'm calling the police. So again, because Mark went over to this man's house and confronted him and told this man, he told that man, I want custody. Your, I want a hundred percent custody of your son. Is what he went to that man's house and said, "Girl, and you thought it wasn't gonna be no fight? Just dumb." So. Well, I didn't know, whatever. So she bring up how, you know, he texts me and say, like, you ain't shit, your husband ain't shit, bring me my kid. And I would have done the same thing. Completely done the same thing. I feel like that was a way to handle this. And Mark said, no, this is the whole wrong way. So why would you do this, Mark said, why would you do I did not know that I couldn't go there. You know what I'm saying? He he stood up first. I just defended myself, whatever. And this is true. Tito did stand up first. But you should, not, you should not have even been there. You should not have went and said shit to that man. Period. You know what I'm saying? You know, and he doesn't respect me. He doesn't respect Brittany or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, he said he can treat me any kind of way and treat her any kind of way. And you know, he said, I fucked up because I thought I could go talk to somebody, but the person is unreasonable. That man ain't unreasonable at all. You messed up telling the father that you want custody of his son. It's, you were stupid. You were stupid. Okay. And that's how I went off with them. Like, I can't believe this. Cut the cameras. Cut the cameras. Because, again, Tito had called the police. Bring me my son. Because, again, she don't have custody. And now, not only that, it's going to be think of your husband came to my house and confronted me. We got into a fight. I don't want, I don't want him around my, my kid. Girl. Mm, mm, mm. Anyway, that was all the episode. I hope y'all liked. Do not forget to like this video, to share it, to subscribe. And all that good stuff. I'm about to go to bed, y'all. Peace.